Good morning and welcome to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. I am Cressy Strawn. I'm Programme Director here at the Cambridge Institute of Sustainability Leadership and I'm delighted to be joined by my colleagues Anish Data, who's Director of Specsavers and also the Chair of the BSP Asia and Susan Girage, who's Managing Director of the Responsible Business Consulting and also Director of BSP Africa. Um, Sorry, George, we're a, sli we're a slide behind already, but <laughs> never mind. Um, before I hand over to Manish and Susan to give more of a, a personal introduction, just to provide an overview of what to expect this morning, we'll be sharing some insights into the BSP and what it is, and also what's coming up in the regions over the next few months and early 2025. So with no further ado, I'd love to hand over to Manish to uh, introduce herself. Thank you, Cressy, and good morning to everyone from Cambridge. I know it's probably not morning where you are, so whichever time of the day it is, welcome to this uh, webinar. I'm really delighted to be joining you alongside uh, the wonderful Susan and Cressy uh, to talk about the Business Sustainability Programme. My background is very much uh, practitioner-based, so all of my career has been more or less in delivering sustainability in a corporate context. So, as Cressy said, uh, I'm a uh, director of sustainability at Specsavers Group, which is a large optical and audiology business across 11 countries serving 45 million customers. Uh, prior to that, I was largely at Marks and Spencer, leading sustainability at Marks and Spencer, which is a British retailer with a global presence. Um, and I'm also very honoured to be a fellow at the University of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, and for this year to be having the huge honour and responsibility, frankly, of chairing uh, the BSP, the Business Sustainability Programme in Cambridge earlier this year and then Asia uh, later this year. I'll stop there and hand over to Susan uh, for your introduction. Thanks, uh, Cressy. Thanks, Manish. Hello, everyone. I'm Susan Joroge and I'm based out of uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, like Manish, I'm by background, I'm a sustainability practitioner. I've mainly worked with uh, different multinationals. Uh, DHL, Unilever, Standard Chartered Bank, and in different markets across Africa, Asia, and in Europe. Um, and a few years ago, I decided to move into independent consulting, which for me felt like an opportune way to, um, yeah, help more organizations in this part of the world, especially, you know, build momentum and understanding around sustainability. I'm also a CSL fellow and the chair or program director for the inaugural BSP Africa that will be happening uh, early next year. So it's great to be here with you. Thanks, Susan. Very exciting. Um, so just uh, it feels appropriate to firstly welcome you to the University of Cambridge. Um, can we switch to the next slide, please, George? Sorry, I'll I'll keep I'll keep. Thank you. Um, so yes, welcoming you to the University of Cambridge. Founded in 1209, it makes us the fourth oldest university in the world, and it's produced over 800 years of scientific discovery, innovation, and thought leadership. Its core mission is to contribute to society through the pursuit of education, learning, and research at the highest international levels of excellence. And as you can see on the next slide. It really has fostered leaders in all fields. The impressive alumni and affiliates include over 121 Nobel Prize laureates. It's got, we, it also includes 47 heads of state. And what feels appropriate today for the opening of the Olympic Games, there have been 210 Olympic medalists as well. So it really is safe to say that we feel like we are sitting in the centre of um, academic excellence. And it's within the university that the Cambridge Institute of Sustainable Leadership, which um, is where we are working from, uh, exists today. So on the next slide, you can see that we're an international institute that's, <laughs> that's focused on activating leadership globally to transform economies for people, nature and climate. What this actually means is that we work at the interface of business, academia and governance. And we do this across four areas. We work in foresight, where we're developing new ideas and evidence based on what's required for, for businesses to support their transformation. We also convene governments 
business and finance to establish new norms and policies. And we work with innovators who have sustainability at their core to help them thrive and grow. But most importantly for this particular webinar this morning, we've been at the forefront of sustainability education for the past 30 years. And the BSP or the Business and Sustainability Programme, I'll refer to it as the BSP from now on because it's uh, a bit easier. But the BSP is our flagship program and one we're incredibly proud of. We've been delivering it for over 30 years now. So really, what is the BSP? <laughs> As you can see from these grainy photos, it began in 1994 when His Royal Highness, formerly the Prince of Wales, convened 35 individuals at Madlingley Hall in Cambridge to discuss the critical global challenges of the day. For 30 years, we've now been delivering this three day immersive residential event four times each year globally. And it has become a global uh, benchmark for sustainability leadership education. In 1994, when they met, the key message that emerged from the first seminar was that Sustainability was predominantly environmental and actually to the responsibility of governments to manage. I'm thrilled to say that we can recognise that this narrative has moved on since then. And in fact, we've seen a lot of prog progress in this field. The conversation and narrative has now widened to include social aspects of sustainability. But most importantly, we've seen huge, huge gains in international treaties such as the Kyoto Protocol, and also uh, the Paris Agreement emerging from COP21, trying to curb emissions. But <laughs> despite these advances, we also recognise that we're still facing an ecological and climate crisis. There's challenges with social justice and social inequality, and all within a divisive geopolitical landscape. At CISL, and as you may have seen from the video from Lindsay at the start of this webinar, we have been thinking hard about what leadership is required to take us through this new turbulent era. And it's within this context that we're delivering the BSP today. So what makes the BSP so special is its rich heritage and that year on year, we are constantly thinking about how to keep the core curriculum global, uh, sorry, core global curriculum relevant, compelling, and also most importantly, impactful. So on the next slide, we just I'd just like to explore uh, really from our opinion, what makes the BSP so special is it has a unique course design. We are designing a program that is, that that <coughs> apologies, I'm just going to have some water. Sorry. We're, we have a unique course design that explores the strategic importance of global challenges and trends. And in fact, our core curriculum has some key ingredients in it that enables us to help support business leaders navigate the complexity and ambiguity of the time, but also enable them to, to take shape and, and shape the context in which they want to thrive as leaders in the future. So what are these ingredients? Firstly, we develop a mindset of system thinkers. So it's not just how the, look, how the world looks like through an environmental and social and nature lens, but how these interconnect and what's the scale and pace the world is changing at. Secondly, we'll distill these down to the regional and how this manifests materially across different sectors and for specific businesses. So bringing in case studies from businesses who have, who have been navigating this path for a while now, not necessarily as a blueprint of success, but in order to share with delegates and understand some of the challenges and obstacles they've overcome to make progress. And thirdly, we'll be looking at the leadership required for the future we want. And all of this is guided by a global steering committee and delivered by expert faculty in the BSP seminars. Our global curriculum Apologies, next slide, please, George. The, our, our global curriculum is, um, as I mentioned, governed by the global governance structure of the Global Steering Committee. And as you can see here, it's an impressive lineup of senior leaders from across academia, science, policy, and sustainability. 
and the Global Steering Committee re meet regularly to discuss the latest trends and challenges impacting and affecting senior leaders and decision makers today. The Global Steering Committee's um, aim is to make sure that we're keeping the curriculum relevant, but also that we're ensuring a global conversation. The Global Steering Committee itself is regularly refreshed and new members are brought on to ensure diversity of thought, of voice and making sure that we have representation from all geographies. This enables the BSP to be a continually evolving and agile programme as well. I'm also pleased to say that we have our chair of the Global Steering Committee on today, Manish, so he'll be very happy to take any further questions on that. Um, so finally, it feels at the right time to pass over to Manish and Susan, and I can also speak to what's coming up in the next few months. But just to mention that we know that a global problem re requires a global conversation, which is why we have widened our reach to deliver the BSP in different regions and encourage diversity of, of voice into this conversation. Manish, can I hand over to you um, to explore what's coming up in Asia this year? Thanks, Cressy. And I, I want to start really just by giving uh, a bit of a insight into my own personal journey with the BSP, which has been very profound. So I, I actually, my first experience of CISL was as a delegate, and it was as a delegate on BSP. Uh, and that was, uh, had a very, very poignant, um, poignant influence on me at that time in my career, about 12, 13 years ago, uh, when I, I knew something about sustainability. I was at Marks and Spencer at the time. But this program over the three and a half days was a moment of great epiphany. It enabled me to turn my uh, interest and my passion into, uh, to give me the knowledge, confidence to turn that and activate that in my business. And that's exactly the journey that delegates on this program go through over three and a half days and indeed beyond that as well. From that, I became a contributor, came and presented sort of uh, case studies uh, around uh, how, you know, businesses trying to adopt sustainability, integrate sustainability, and, and then as faculty, and now the honor of being chair in the programs and leading the program. So that's my personal journey. It's a very 360 degree journey off BSP. I've enjoyed it very much. I, I, I continue to learn in every program I'm, I'm, um, I'm privileged to be part of. Now, before we go into the differences about the Singapore program coming up in October uh, this year um, for BSP Asia, I want to just quickly touch on the similarities. So the soul of BSP, whether it's delivered in Cambridge, in um, Africa, as we'll soon hear from Susan, or in Asia, is the same. It's based firstly on kind of a, a co-created process. It's a third of formal teaching or presenting or knowledge exchange, whatever you want to call it. A third of working in small syndicate groups with uh, a faculty member facilitating those. And a third of the time spent on what I call informal learning or the fringe BSP which is learning peer-to-peer, -peer, in breaks, over dinner, where actually some of the most powerful uh, conversations sometimes happen. And the pedagogy is, as Cressy has described, that remains the same. It's about thinking about the big forces rapidly shaping our world, our society, our economy, and business. And the importance of thinking in systems, thinking about not shareholders only, but stakeholders uh, in that system, thinking about the value creation more broadly than just for financial business purposes, but for nature, for people, and therefore then for the economies. And it brings in concepts like being purpose-led as an organization and as an individual. Uh, and, and it showcases that organizational sustainability in practice, um, including innovative solutions such as artificial intelligence and others like that. And of course, it dwells on at, towards the end of the program, the last day, the personal leadership that's needed to activate all of this. So I really like that sort of, that it's learning from each other. It's very much a knowledge exchange. It's very practical. It's very helpful in that sense. And that's helped me time and time again in my, in my career, continues to every day. So what about Singapore? What's different about Singapore? Well, the first thing is, it's, it's, um, we are really harnessing the expertise that's locally based there, and particularly practitioner expertise. And we have a very knowledgeable faculty. So just to explain to people what faculty is, faculty are the people that remain with the program throughout its duration. Uh, contributors come in and out of a program. That's the, that's the difference. So the faculty that we have in Singapore are all based in, in the region. Uh, and I'm delighted that we're joined by Jason Pomeroy, a celebrated architect, 
uh, working in the built environment, not just in Singapore, actually globally. Darren McBain, who works with lots and lots of businesses um, in the in the sort of uh, as a CSO, and Spencer Lowe from Google, who heads sustainability for Google in Asia. A, a really, really brilliant um, faculty that bring lots of variety of experience, but more importantly, the knowledge of the local region, and that's really important. We also have great contributors, uh, some from our Global Steering Committee, who also bring the same thing. So bringing that sort of local regional practitioner based um, um, experience is, is one of the unique points of Singapore. But alongside that, we're also going to bring um, a global viewpoint, viewpoints from um, Europe and from the US and from other parts of the world, from Africa. So it becomes not a completely global program, a, a completely regional program, but it's a global program with a regional um, weighting, I guess. And um, and some of the things, the content that we will be probably dialing up slightly, taking into account the regional context, is talking about nature and ecosystems, is being sensitive around social topics in terms of just transition and inequality, celebrating Asia's powerful and rising powerful influence in terms of it being the world's supply chain, the size of its growing consumer markets, the abundance of talented young human resource, of innovation and technology that's coming from there. It's very influential diaspora, the, the export of its human capital in other parts of the world. And respectful that terms such as net zero and circularity are not hugely recognized in these parts of the world, but are steeped deeply in centuries old cultures that exist in places like China and India and other parts of Asia as well. And of course, we are going to touch on, as this is one of the forces that's shaping our world, the geopolitics with very re important regional specifics, because we cannot assume a one world view of what geopolitics means. So that's just a flavor, a little taster of what um, uh, BSB Asia is going to look like. I can't encourage you enough to sign up, join us on this journey, help us co-create it. We commence it on the 6th of October and we'll end on the 9th of October. And I'm sure we'll share more details about how to sign up uh, towards the end of this webinar. Susan, what's the experience going to be like in Africa? Oh, we can't hear you, Susan. No, still not. Should we? If this yeah. That's better. Yeah. Okay, great. It somehow drops in and comes back. Um, but thank you for that, uh, Munish. Um, yeah, the Asia program sounds really exciting. Um, for for the Africa program that's going to happen in in mid March, I think just to just to the points importantly that Christy and Munish have highlighted, the BSP in Africa is still the same amazing global program, um, but delivered in an Africa and developing economy context, which I think is um, an ex extremely important lens to look at when you understand what developing economies are like and how sustainable development and sustainability leadership needs to look like for this continent. Um, to participants, I would say that there's if you're looking at a, a global uh, career or an international career as a business executive, it's important to have a sense and a strong understanding of what majority of the world looks like from a developing context and what that uh, sustainability leadership would look like. So there's, I think, a professional advantage to, to also being a part of a program in Africa that looks at that developing world lens. Africa is such a huge continent. It's plus 50 countries, you know, over 2000 languages and cultures. Um, and each region, whether it's north, south, east or west, is very diverse from a social and economic perspective. And so that will be a really important lens to draw in in terms of the faculty that we'll work with, but also the contributors. Um, the fact that uh, Africa is developing in the stages that we're at, the political economy plays such a critical role and stakeholder engagement. So when you think of sustainable development and when you think of transformational leadership, 
you've got to be able to have that collaboration in the same way you were talking about Munich in Asia, the political economy and multi-stakeholder partnerships, I think is going to be an important part of the, of the Africa program. And then to the nature and people question, I think when you, when you look at our context of Africa, it's impossible to separate the two. Uh, nature is a lived experience um, for so many people on this continent. So that will also be something important that will draw out. And there's the tension as well between, you know, Africa seen as an extractive uh, continent, but Africans wanting it to be an, a value addition continent to them. So there's also the geopolitical tension of where Africa sits in its in its global role now in the you know in this conversation around the sustainability challenges and opportunities. And Munish, you touched on it when you when you referred to the the just transition, um, and I think that's also a very important part of what needs to come through for for uh, the BSP and the lens of society. Fundamentally, so many people on this continent are struggling with the basics food health um, electricity poverty etc so when we think of sustainability and when we think of transformational leadership it's got to be leadership that's supporting these countries to lift billions and millions of people out of poverty but at the same time do a low carbon industrialization economy, something that's never been done before. So I think it's very timely to have a BSP in Africa because we need a new way of leadership thinking for this continent that's going to, to drive the change. It should be the same models that were, that were followed before. So I'll leave it there and yeah, hand over to you, Cressy, thanks. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Manish. They both sound like excellent programs, and I strongly encourage you to go and have a look on our website. We'll certainly share details afterwards. Just to note as well, it will be between the BSP Africa seminars between 16th and 19th of March 2025. That's correct, isn't it, Susan? Yes. Correct. It's early. Yeah. Um, so just to just to uh, really uh, mention the BSP uh, UK, which will be bringing home to the University of Cambridge in November of this year. It feels um, we're very lucky because we're bringing it back to the city where the atom was first split. The structure of the DNA was discovered and Charles Darwin um, posited the theory of evolution. So we are it's a unique seat of learning and we're very proud to host uh, the BSP at Cambridge. Um, each BSP, as we've mentioned, retains that core curriculum and the global voice, and we'll certainly be making sure between Manish, Susan and I that we keep the conversation live of what we're seeing from the different BSPs in, in, in Asia and Africa and bringing that um, regional conversation as well. This year, in addition, in Cambridge, we really will be delving deeper into what leadership for a tur turbulent world looks like. Uh, we'll be drawing upon some of CISL's own frameworks, such as the leadership framework, and bringing in contributors such as Zoe Arden to talk and talk us through and really interrogate this in the room. Uh, we'll also be taking a specific nature focus this year in line with uh, the current urgency on businesses to think about taking nature positive action. And of course, much wider conversations will be set within the recognition of the increasing regulatory burden on businesses that's occurring in, in, in the European context too. Um, I think just before I open to questions, I just wanted to share a little bit about what you would experience as a BSP delegate. When we were preparing for this webinar, and also as Manish has mentioned, it really is the soul of the BSP, and that's that's experienced wherever you would attend a seminar and across the globe. But really, we work hard to provide a safe space so that delegates to come together with the uh, expertise and um, other um, academics and scientists in the room to unpack these global challenges interrogate um, what they mean for themselves as leaders and for their businesses and also talk about potential solutions moving forward. 
it's a participatory program so we really encourage delegates to bring them their whole selves and the context of their organization into the room to maximize the benefits as Manish mentioned says breakout um, the small breakout groups we have syndicate groups we make space at a time with lunches and we have hearty debates to really challenge one another um, and take that forward but also as a delegate you'll make the most incredible connections in the room um, and these will far far outlive the program we are only too aware of groups and syndicate groups that still meet years on to sustain some of the continual learning and action and and genuinely hold each other <laughs> hold each other accountable for what they're doing post bsp um, and finally when you've join the program, you'll also be a uh, part of the BSP wider alumni network. And just to give you a sense of that, that's over 4,500 senior leaders from about 1,500 organizations across 130 countries. So it's a very global um, and large network to be joining. And I think that without any further ado, I'd like to open it up to any questions that you may have, unless there's anything else from Manish and Susan to, Susan to add at this point. No, no, keen for the questions, I think, yeah. Keen for the yeah. questions, fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we've... Sorry, I'm just having a quick look. Right, well, I think this may be a good one for you, Manish. <laughs> We've received a question that says, how do you propose to integrate sustainability agenda into the core of business strategy? <clears throat> yeah, it's a great question. And I think the question that I suppose BSB is seeking to answer, and I want to start by uh, the very first part of the journey that you go on when you go on to BSP, which is understanding the context. Nothing operates on its own in isolation. It all operates within a context. And, it, and what is happening in the context within which we as individuals, the organizations we belong to, the economy operates, the biosphere exists the, and society operates, is really important to understand. And it's really important to understand, therefore, what's changing in that context, which is happening very rapidly and almost interconnectedly in a sort of systemic way. And then understanding what the implications are of operating within this sort of changing context, the impact that this has, of course, on our environment, on the biosphere, but also on society, and how we as an organization and as individuals are impacting that context as well. Again, in terms of the environment, society, across, in the organizational sense, our entire value chain. What I suppose we in the model world would call double a double materiality assessment for those that understand that term. And we realize then that to operate as individuals, as business, society, uh, and economy, it depends and is completely reliant on healthy ecosystems and stable societies. So I suppose the big uh, question or the big feeling that we're trying to create is how can you as a leader and your business or organization contribute to creating a healthy ecosystem and stable society? What are the skills, barriers uh, that need to be overcome, the mindset shifts that need to happen in your organization, in you as a person, to enable this uh, this kind of condition? How do you build purpose, awareness, ambition, uh, and activation in terms of leadership? And of course, education around awareness, uh, particularly, plays a very big role in BSP for me as a delegate, and for delegates that I w sort of work with in our programs, um, it plays a, a massive role in that. And that can then, that activation then, in terms of integrating it into the business strategy, can turn it into First of all, making bold commitments. But those are not enough, those are just words, right? It's turning those commitments into roadmaps and action plans, integrated into annual three-year plans, mid to long-term strategy. So that's what I think it means to integrate sustainability into business strategy. And it requires quite a lot of um, hard work that this program hopefully provides us with. Um, it requires quite a lot of focus that hopefully this program adds, act, acts as a catalyst to. Fantastic. Thanks, Manish. Is there, um, the, we have a question here also, I think that's appropriate for you, Susan. Um, Africa yeah. is a huge and diverse continent. So what makes Kenya a great location for the BSP seminar next year? Great, great question. <laughs> so um, 
that's true. It is a very, very wide and different continent. The first thing maybe I'd like to point out is I think uh, um, Kenya has taken a, a leadership position. I Well, we've lost sound again, I'm afraid, Susan. Why don't we can go to the next? Now? Oh, yeah, we, we can. can. Yes. I have something. I, I think my computer's fighting with go to webinar, but yeah, so just let me try and rush through it quickly before it happens again. So the first I think is uh, Kenya's taken a very strong leadership position on the continent towards climate leadership. The first Africa Climate Summit was held in Nairobi in September last year, and this was the first time uh, African leaders got together to take a position around uh, climate change. As, as a region. The second one I'd point out is um, that uh, Kenya is uh, now the sort of, you know, Silicon Savannah. Well, I'm afraid, Susan, we've lost you again. Uh, yes, if you could respond in the chat, that'd be fantastic. And I will pick up the next question, which I'm afraid I'm going to direct to you again, Manish, but I'm happy to, to discuss as well. But I think it speaks to your experience perfectly. Um, it's a question in the chat that says, what do you think are the main obstacles that senior leaders face that the BSP seminar addresses? Additionally, how are these discrete between leaders from developing and developed countries? So let me take the first part of that question, um, the first of the two questions there, which is, I think I think one of the main obstacles uh, that the BSP helps leaders overcome is, is as a lack of a, awareness, not awareness of individual issues that we are facing. You know, people are, because it's so mainstream now, people are very aware of that our climate is changing, we're seeing extreme weather events happening more regularly, we're seeing the depletion uh, of resources, which affects, of course, their availability and also their price, which is a, a challenge for business. Um, so we know these things individually, but it's actually the interconnected nature of them and the urgency of them, uh, the rapidly changing context that I described earlier, that is probably one of the big, um, I suppose, blind spots that leaders have sometimes before they come to BSP and then are uh, enlightened as, a, as part of the process to go through BSP. The second obstacle, I think, is feeling that this is a burden. So the sustainability in some way is a burden, whether it's a reporting burden or an additional objective for business. And I hope that at the end of a, a seminar, a, a delegate can walk away thinking this is not a burden. This is actually something that can enable um, a very powerful purpose in my business. This can enable, therefore, a very, uh, um, a very, um, our, our contribution to kind of um, managing that context in a more sense in a more sensitive way we as a business have influence we have customers we have supply chain we have a, a value chain impact and are impacted by uh, the environment which we can um, not just mitigate but hopefully start repairing and regenerating some of the things that are not quite right at the moment and and but the key thing is then turning all of that knowledge through the form of learning from other practitioners and case studies which we've talked about already both learning from what went well for those uh, organizations and individuals and also what didn't um, into practical activation when you go back to your organization. And you know what? You're not alone in that because you suddenly get this peer group from uh, what I love. But one of the things that is amazing about BSP is that we really bring a global de um, delegation together um, and, and from many different sectors, both business, largely business sectors, but also non-business actors as well. And so you get this sort of almost like a, a personal group of uh, a net, you build an immediate network that have become lifelong memories over time, a, a lifelong relationship over time. And I think that's incredibly powerful because you suddenly get a peer group that you can uh, test things with, that you can continue to work with in the program and outside the program as well. And I think that's really good. In terms of, you know, the differences of challenges that, um, that, uh, leaders that come, that delegates, leaders that come from um, uh, different parts of the world face, they are they are different. They're very, um, you know, there are some very distinct differences. 
So we know because we can see that some of the extreme weather impacts are happening in sort of the southern hemisphere, the middle and southern hemisphere of the world. They're happening everywhere in the world. The most adverse ones are happening in that sort of band around that. And leaders in, that come from those areas have to contend with uh, those kinds of challenges on a daily basis, more than perhaps leaders that come from other parts of the world. We know that some of the challenge, societal challenges that Susan's already mentioned around just transition, around actually trying to uh, not have just renewable energy but having access to energy is really important not just having you know a circular economy but access to resources full stop is really important some of those nuances are what leaders are facing and then there are demographic differences um, in in supply chains in workforces that leaders have to take into account as well the asian uh, continents and i'm generalizing hopelessly here but just to try and make the point has a much younger demographic of people that are in the in businesses that have different aspirations that are that have different hopes that have different expectations that are off their employer than people that are, are managing workforces perhaps in in more sort of developed parts of the world like the europe and the us so i mean this is a a topic for a whole webinar in itself frankly and i'm not going to do it any justice in in two or three sentences but those are the kind of i think nuances that we are we see but you know what's beautiful about it Cressy um, and Susan is that we bring those together and I'm, I'm forever in awe of our faculty who do that in such a skillful way because pulling together a group of six to seven people in, in a syndicate group who have never met each other before and getting them to go through this delegate journey um, to, to be open and share with each other to, to be able to express themselves um, you know, with psychological safety in such a quick time that by the end of those three and a half days, your best buddies with each other is a really powerful and very skillfully, uh, a skillful um, sort of, um, I suppose, faculty role. And so I'm very proud and honoured that we work with people that are so experienced at doing that, uh, that they can uh, create this community of leaders, a community of learners, community of activators. Thanks, Manish, and you're absolutely right. And I think it's safe to say we've often witnessed the most unlikely of alliances um, forming in the room where they would ne wouldn't necessarily consider themselves um, friends prior to the BSP, but they've certainly left uh, left as firm friends after. So um, that's fantastic. And I think you may have covered a little bit of this other question that's come in that I'm I'm happy to take, which is that is the agenda the same for each region? And I say you covered that slightly in the sense that um, talking about the slightly regional differences, it's important that we um, that we keep, as we mentioned before, that the BSP is a global program. It's a global conversation and the core curriculum and the um, key elements that we keep the same around the systems thinking piece um, and setting that kind of global landscape is absolutely the same. The agenda itself will be adjusted slightly for each BSP seminar and where it's delivered, but based on that core curriculum. And then there may be deeper dives into um, issues or challenges or themes that articulate in the different regions. But as I also mentioned, Manish, Susan and I are also working hard to build an agenda for this year that also incorporates and feedback what we're hearing from the different regions as well. So that will be informing and updating and evolving the BSP as we move along. But just in answer to that, the agenda is based on the same curriculum, but it will be articulated slightly differently in each region. But you would expect the same experience as a BSD, BSP delegate wherever you attend. Chrissy, can I just may I just be uh, add something to that? I think what also yes. makes the content different is is the fact that we recruit local contributors, a locally based faculty where where possible. Um, and they bring the local regional expertise into the room um, and the case studies that are most relevant to that region. So whilst, yes, you're right, the agenda, the pedagogy, the, the learning experience, the, the learner journey is, is very similar. <coughs> what makes it so different is, is the contribution uh, locally that makes it quite different. But bringing yeah. those global perspectives into the room as well. You're absolutely right. And I have to say also the other thing that makes it slightly different to the delegates themselves attending as well, because that, of course, will shape the conversation and where it goes to and some of the challenges they're facing. But absolutely. Thank you, Manish. Um, 
We've had a question here that's um, slightly um, different. I'm not sure which one of us will pick this up, but perhaps we could all um, have a conversation together. But it feels like it's within your remit, Manish, as well. Yeah. Um, who should be made responsible for sustainability leadership in a big country like India? Yeah, so uh, a little <laughs> bit on the same scale as Susan answered. Uh, to generalise India as a, as a country is probably very unfair to its diversity and its sheer scale. Uh, in in many senses, it's 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 a group of many countries uh, which are very diverse from the southern parts of India to the northern parts of India. But the, the, the very simple answer to that is that every actor in our society, in our economy, is responsible for sustainability leadership. Uh, business, of course, given its influence, given its scale, given its reach, given its um, true sort of connect. You know, business is one of the, if not the only actor that can connect not just in India, but in most, all societies more or less, connect every part of the value chain because it works at, at the supply chain end of the value chain and it works at the consumer end of the value chain as well. And so as a connector, business has a huge responsibility and opportunity to be a real change agent in terms of sustainable transformation. And that's where, you know, BSP, because we largely attract a business delegation, can play a very, very pivotal role in readying those business leaders and their organizations to play that uh, change agent role. But of course, business needs the right environment, the right rules, the right um, certainty uh, to operate in. And whether that's at a, at a, in India's case, at a national level or uh, equally at a regional level, government both regionally and nationally have to create the right um, legislative and policy landscape in order for business to thrive. Even if that legislation and policy is enabling minimum standards to be raised because that you know for us for the delegates that come to bsp it's not minimum standards that we are trying to um achieve its maximum standards and 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 so but even if that that happens and it pulls up the minimum standard then that can be very helpful uh for business to have certainty in terms of where they need to invest in terms of um how they can uh, allocate resources in order to achieve sustainable transformation and so it, it's very much true. And then the third part of the sector, the third sector that we work with a lot at CISL is, of course, finance. So ensuring that with the right policy setting, the right level of business ambition and commitment, that we can make capital flows happen in a country like India to divert them away from um, industries and, and, and um, yeah, industries and products and services that are damaging our biosphere and damaging society to those that are improving society in a just way is, is really important. So the, I see those three actors as being really important. At the very center of that, I see citizens and citizenship as being a really important um, change agent. But I see reaching those citizens through, through those three actors, particularly through business, being very fundamental in a country like India, which is hugely complex, which is uh, very regional, has many regional nuances, as being really important. And I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe just to 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 jump in, uh, Munish. I think you explained it really, really well. Um, but also just coming back to the to the BSP itself. One part there's the institutional who who's supposed to lead, and you've talked through the different institutions. But I think there's also the the fundamental choice of that individual leader who has the decision-making power and influence to drive the change that's needed. And for me, importantly, with the BSP, that's something that I think we, we also try and draw out from, from that individual leadership perspective because they are in positions of influence, decision-making, to drive policy change, to drive strategic decision making for a company, et cetera. Um, I think I, I'm keen not for us to separate the, the institution, but the individuals as well who make that change happen when they believe that that change is important to happen. So I just wanted to, to also just highlight that. Otherwise, we, we can easily pass the bug, uh, the buck to an entity, which is just the shell, but it's us, the individual decision makers who drive the agenda of change within those institutions. Absolutely. Very well said. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Susan. Um, 
we've received another question here um, about um, how does this, how, how does sustainability apply to government offices? Is it the same as for corporates? And it feels sort of an extension of the question we've just answered, but I'd like to address it directly. So, um, Susan, would you like to pick this up? As we can hear you perfectly now, so that's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. I hope. Oh, good. It's it's still there. You can hear me. All right. I was a little worried. Um, so I think sustainability also applies to government because government has an operational model they have a footprint they have be it from an environmental impact perspective um, they have an impact from a social perspective and then of course there's the influence they have around policy so i would look at it from both sides to say from an operational model um government have a sustainability impact what is their you know contribution to emissions how they treat their people um how they integrate you know fair pay diversity and inclusion etc the same operating business model challenges i think as a, a business would um and then they have influence on citizen and other institutions through the policy making and implementation that they're able to do. So it may not be a profitability revenue generating model like a company is, but they still have an operating model that needs to manage and you know its impacts. Ideally, then also from a policy perspective um, and the work that they do as government to then put in place policy that proactively support the change that's required in society and by institutions is how i answer the question absolutely and and i think that that's fantastic and i think also when we think about the bsp and who are um, the delegates that come to this and the conversations that arise recognizing where there are policy gaps and and having those conversations between businesses and government to understand how do we set policies for the future to improve you know from the environment for the betterment of society and really think through that strategically but in a very proactive way as well it's, um sorry Chris, it, it, yeah it reminds me of a concept that i came across and we often talk about at bsp which is called the ambition loop which is this positive feedback loop in which bold government policies and private sector leadership kind of reinforce each other uh, and together take climate action or social action to an, a new level. So let me give you an example. If, if government creates clear, ambitious targets and policy and predictability in those, then that encourages strong, ambitious, science-based commitments and action from business. And in turn, that then gives governments confidence to continue doing that and in turn gives business confidence to continue acting in that way. And it's those positive ambition loops, particularly um, in a kind of multidisciplinary, multi-sector gathering like the BSP, that we try and create so that we understand the system, the actors in the system, and how they can positively influence each other. And I think that's really critical output, really, for me from BSP in terms of how government and business can work together. Thanks, Pranish. That's, um, that's absolutely. And I think what's interesting, I was thinking in a context at the moment where there's so much ambiguity and unpredictability often, the BSP does offer a space to come together and find that um, find that even balanced and credible ground. So that's why we're bringing in faculty. We keep returning back to the science and um, informing the conversation from a uh, a very measured and reasonable and considered um, debate as well. So I think it's really important that that's, that's the place that we create in the room to have those conversations and form those connections too. Thank you. Um, I realise I'm just looking at time. We're, we're coming to the end of the webinar now, so I would encourage anyone who hasn't asked a question, um, please do so in the chat. We can probably take um, a couple more. I've got one here that's um, fairly operational, which I'm happy to answer about how to apply for the BSP. Um, we will be sharing this webinar and um, information about the application form. Um, it says in the second part of the question, what is the selection process? Um, 
we do have a uh, we have an application form as i mentioned we have a selection panel thank you george uh we yes please do go to the qr code or um the website and that will give you access to all of the bsp seminars and information about how to apply once you've applied we receive the application it then goes through a selection panel where we do have some specific criteria in order to make sure that we have a balance of um, voices in the room and also that the delegates are from different industries to enrich the conversation and make sure that it's it's really to make sure that the expectations are met from both sides that we, we're bringing we're bringing together a cohort of people committed and engaged and ready to move the move the conversation forward um, once you've applied the selection panel reviews fairly quickly and promptly and um, we can get back to you um, with more details and we're always happy to pick up questions um, so I think I'm just having a quick look now if there's any other questions coming through I think there's one that would be rather nice if we answered for all of us um, which would be I will ask it Manish and then Susan and then I can give my take. But what was your hope or dream for a BSP participant post course? So um, I, have, I have a long list, Cressy, so, but I won't go through okay. the long list. We've, um, got, we've I, got a few moments left. <laughs> I think it links to the sort of what I love about BSP as well. Um, and it's about um, seeing this real. Um, Roller coaster is probably a nice way to describe it of, 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 a, of a learning journey that one goes through. And having been through it myself and then observed it in others, I can really, really, really sort of relate to this, which is, you know, the, the first day is very, the first old day, 24 hours of the, of the program is very much about um, a, a real mix of emotions. On the one side, a real sense of shock, maybe some anger, some sadness about, you know, the context we're in at the moment. And then very quickly, a real empowerment um, and, and real hope through real economy case studies and practice that we can do this. There's still ways in which we can bend the curves that are going in the wrong direction to go in the right direction. And I, whether I call it my favorite thing from BSP or, you know, it, it's probably one of the things that I get satisfaction to see that change in people coming in, maybe as skeptics, as people that are not that aware and then going away as these sort of activated change makers which is really phenomenal especially given their sphere of influence given that they're in senior leadership positions and then i see the thing that i really really hope for is that they take that learning they understand it and they 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 continue to invest in it continuously for them and their team so they don't keep that learning to themselves they actually cascade it in their whole organization they create organizational change as a result of it and ultimately you know we all want to see action we want to see evidence and we so we see a delegate you know you know we, we stay in touch through various means and we see that they went on the course and six months later you see uh, the announcement of some very bold commitments from their organization you can understand where that light bulb moment might have happened then you start seeing their first annual sustainability report come out with their commitments which are including some of the challenges they're also facing and you're reminded oh yeah we did discuss about it. you remember that case study that we both went through uh, on day three of bsb from x company they too face those challenges and and very often i get back in touch with those delegates um and very often um you know they they point back at that moment in the room when they heard so and so speak at bsb as being that moment of magic where it finally all came together for them and now they're doing what they're doing and then and then we see people change their their roots you know they go and work in different businesses and and that's how we've now built up this network of four and a half thousand people that have been through bsb in nearly 200 organizations across the world because for 30 years individuals have been through this journey time and time again um and so uh, yeah i get i get a lot of that's my hope is that we keep growing the journey the community that but more importantly we keep growing its positive impact uh, and that's that's the important thing for me thanks manish susan yeah um okay good i was checking if my audio is there um yeah manish you you summed it up so well it's kind of hard to <laughs> to add to that um the leadership action i think for me the fact that you have uh, decision makers and leaders in a room who have 
the potential to change the strategic direction of an organization, I think is the most powerful thing. So when they're able to go back and drive that change in their organizations, I think for me, that's a that's the, the perfect sweet spot uh, because it's it's people who make change happen. Um, the other, I think, is the, the collaboration and partnership. When you come out of the BSP, like you said, Cressy, you have such strong relationships with the people that you're in. So your influences in each of your organizations and coming together, whether it's to partner or collaborate on something, to advocate for something, to drive a particular agenda in your industry, et cetera. Um, it creates so much more systemic impact and change. So I think those are the two things that would be on my wish list for, for post course for, for the participants. Thank you. It's impossible to follow you both, but really just to build on that and so, um, sort of I guess sort of put my own to this. It's a. I feel like there's a, as a as a program we want to inspire leaders to take action, and to to build on both of what you're saying. I feel like it's also about we want them to go away and feel empowered and equipped, and use that learning and knowledge to take it forward, and realize also that with that enormous community now, we're not alone in doing that, but actually embracing that change, embracing the ambiguity and the complexity moving forward and feeling that you're actually equipped to be able to do that, to move move the agenda forward as well. So I think um, we're at the top of the hour. I cannot thank you enough for all joining us this morning. If you have any other questions, please do contact us. We're always happy to pick them up. Um, I would strongly encourage you to go and have a look at our website to find out some more about the BSP and then um, apply. Um, following this, um, following the close, we will send the webinar out to your email addresses. Um, but really, it's just safe to say, have a lovely day and thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.